Welcome to the Elite Training video. In this video we will illustrate how to make your hardware compatible with Microsoft Flight Simulator. After downloading the Elite FS from FlyElite.com, we will need to proceed with the installation. Accept license agreement. Select what version of Flight Sim will you be using. This will install all the files in the desired directory. Here you have two choices. Either you select to install the driver, meaning do you have any Elite brand USB devices or not. In this case we will select yes. We also do a complimentary FSUI PC install. No need to register. This is an OEM edition. After the installation has been completed, we're going to go ahead and launch Flight Sim. Now let's click Run to the FSUI PC screen and press Yes. And we'll do the same thing for Elite FS. This screen will search if you have any COM devices. In our case, we don't have any. I'm going to go ahead and set up this aircraft for flight. If you click this Change button, it allows you to select what aircraft you're going to use in Flight Sim. In this case, we'll pick a Cessna. To the right we can change our current location. In the airport ID field, we'll just type in ORL. We can select the runway and press OK. This will launch us to the actual aircraft. Now from the add-ons menu, let's go ahead and click on Elite Config. These next few screens is what's going to allow you to control all your Elite brand hardware with Flight Sim. Let's start with the main page. Items in the main page that you'll find are things like aircraft name, engine type, number of engines. In this case we're using the Cessna Skyhawk 172 SB. If we click about it will actually give us our current version. In this case we're using 2.0.1. In this connection box we have the choices between COM1 or COM2. And if you have any Elite brand USB devices, they'll be displayed below. On our next tab, Flight Controls, we can test the movement of the yoke and program the rocker buttons for the Pro Panel and Pro Panel SE. In this case, we'll use a trim up and trim down, and the left push button will do the autopilot disconnect. Now for our next tab, Flight Control Calibration. This window is used to calibrate your Pro Panel and Pro Panel SE. The Power Quadrant section. In this tab we will select how many number of engines we have on the simulator, what type of engines, and what type of quadrant. We can also reverse the axes on the throttle mixture and prop. On the left section of the screen we also have check boxes to enable and disable your gear and flap switches. power quadrant calibration screen. 
This screen is used to calibrate your throttle quadrant via on your desktop unit, Pro Panel SE, or Pro Panel 2. We suggest doing the calibration any time you change a quadrant. Here we'll set the quadrant to 50% range and then we'll press set. We'll move all six levers forward and we'll press the top set. We'll move them all the way down and then we'll press the bottom set. Now this calibration has been completed. The Avionics Panel tab. This is used to configure your GPS buttons either on your Trimble or your Apollo GPS. Simply press the button physically that you desire to be programmed and drop down from the list of choices what you want that button to select. The Pro Panel tab. In this tab, we can select how many number of engines we have, either via piston or jet. In this case, we have selected left magnetos and starter engines for one and three, and the next one for num engine number two. The configuration is pretty much our endless. Now for the light switches, don't forget to select the actual light switch. Their default position is none. So if you don't drop down these menus and select them appropriately, the nav, strobe, and landing light will not do anything in flight sim. Now for the last tab, the GNS GPS, simply select which GPS you have on channel 1 and channel 2. This concludes this training video. Thank you for watching.